Hi, welcome back. Um, we are back with another family art club. And today, this morning I went on a nature walk and I collected a lot of really interesting and uh, just cool things. And so I was inspired this morning and I wanted to show you one of my favorite ways to make paintings, but also just like a really fun way to spend some time. And the first thing you're gonna need to do is go on a nature walk and pick up all kinds of different materials. You'll also wanna make sure when you're walking that you pick up, I found some grasses. You can hear how they sound, they're dry. They're ready to be cut so that the new fresh grasses can grow. You could also um, find pine needles or any other kind of longer, like bristly kind of material because we are gonna be making really cool paintbrushes from nature. The kind of art that we're gonna make today is what I like to call, like not what I like to call, what a lot of people call process art where we're really interested in the process of making and exploring our materials and experimenting with things that we find rather than the finished product and how it looks at the end. And a lot of times that is one of my favorite ways to make art because when you're experimenting and you're trying new things and you're just seeing what happens, you actually usually discover things that you never thought um, could happen. And maybe you want to repeat it for another kind of art, another artwork that you make. So I'm going to take, I'm going to set these like other materials to the side just for now. And I'm going to focus on making my paintbrush. So I picked out one of my sticks and I think I'm actually going to make two paintbrushes. So I like this stick too. And one side I'm going to make with like the curly, um, wispy end. And then the other side I'm going to make with like the broom bristly tougher end. So you can do this with pine needles too. Um, any kind of, they don't have to be dry. They could be live. All kinds of stuff. So I'm going to take for this end, I'm gonna make my bristly end first. And I'm just gonna kind of make them kind of all about the same length by tapping it with my hand. And then I'm gonna snip it with scissors. Okay, and then I can use, I can tap it back on my countertop here. And I think I wanna have it be a little thicker, so I'm gonna do another snip and get some more bristles for this guy. I'm gonna make a nice pile. You can do as many or as few bristles as you want, but I'm gonna try and make a really thick brush. And I'm gonna use one of the bristles I just cut. It's a Kind of see where I need to cut again so that all my bristles are about the same length. But you know, it's not gonna be perfect and that's okay. Okay. 
So now I'm just going to take my stick. I'm gonna insert it and then hold it like that. So I've got bristles that are wrapping all the way around my paintbrush and I have a rubber band. Hmm. I'm gonna start by wrapping it twice. So it's already pretty tight. Tight enough to at least hold it so I can kind of maneuver with it a little bit more. And then I can always go back and tighten. But you could also go through at this point and add more bristles to your brush just by sticking them in from lifting up my um, rubber band. So I have one brush here, but I wanna see when I make, like, make my painting, I wanna see if there's a difference in between the way that the stiff brush bristles look versus how maybe the swishier bristles look. Okay, so I kind of like the way that looks. We'll see what happens here. It's really kind of fun. So what I'm gonna do is I can either, um, I can either rubber band it to my stick like I did the other one, or if I've, I've got kind of a big bundle here that's long, I can use this bundled end as my handle. So that's what I'm gonna do for this one. I'm gonna take another rubber band and put it real tight around the end. And now I have another brush. And it's kind of dropping some things, but that's okay. Okay, now I'm going to clean up my space. All right, so now I have my clean workspace, which makes me feel a lot better because those grasses were really just taking over my whole countertop and I was like, I don't have enough room to move. But just taking a moment, cleaning up my space so that I can make art um, really helps a lot of times. So I've got my brushes here to the side. I've got some extra sticks. I've got this leaf I found, the acorns and the pine cone, and we're going to make um, nature art. So the first thing you're gonna need to do, and this part I would definitely do outside, especially if you're using a brush like this because there's a lack of less control with it, outside will probably be better. Um, I've got my paper and I have a variety of colors and I'm gonna just squirt it right onto, squirt a couple colors onto my plate here. I think I'm gonna do blue and purple. Here we go. Usually when I start, especially when I'm experimenting with paint, I like to try out and see what my tools do, what kind of marks they make first, before I actually go in and try and make, make a painting. So I call this like the experimentation phase where you're just experimenting with the different painting tools that we've created. So these kind of, you can make a stipply texture. You can, it's, you know, some, some are falling out because I didn't get my, maybe my uh, 
rubber band could be a little tighter. That's probably makes a scratchy sound. I can also try painting from really far away and see how that looks. See if I can make textures or squiggly lines. Okay, so that makes kind of like short, scratchy looking marks. Now I want to see how this acorn looks. So with the acorn, you can almost treat it like, with some natural objects, you can treat them almost like stamps. I could put this piece of paper in um, a tray or something and actually put um, paint on these acorns and let them roll around in the tray. I kind of like how they look when they roll. And this is, I mean, you could spend a whole afternoon collecting materials, um, making your brushes and painting tools, and then just like really having fun and going wild in the backyard. So that makes kind of a stipply texture. If it's really dry, it's like a stipply texture. And if it's a wet, if I just put it in the paint, it makes like a blobby texture. It's pretty cool. And you can continue to do that. And then you can also outside do this, sometimes maybe put your paper on the ground with some masking tape and then paint from above. That could be really fun. One of the other things that I love to do when I'm making nature paint is, or when I'm nature painting, is if I don't wanna make my brushes, but I have brushes already, one of the things I love to do with especially young children is put a variety of natural materials just out on the table. Um, arrange them, you could have your leaves, you could have acorns, you could have this beautiful pine cone, and then um, little palettes of, or containers of paint with regular brushes, and give them that open-ended experience time to just kind of explore the paint and paint on these natural materials. Um, especially if I use like neon paint or really bright, beautiful paint, um, they look kind of really beautiful when they're finished. And you can even take them when they're dry and like connect items with string and create like a mobile um, to hang in your outdoor space or a bedroom or something. Um, but really just kind of not giving them instructions about what to do, but by having your brushes and your paints available and then filling the tabletop. Of course, you put down paper or something, but having different interesting looking natural materials across the tabletop and encouraging kiddos to work together to create this beautiful painted piece of natural material um, is another one of my favorite favorite ways to incorporate nature and painting. So I hope you will um, take these brushes outside, maybe make a brush or paint just some natural materials that you feel inspired by um, and get outside this week because it's beautiful. So I will see you all soon and have a great day. Bye.